As a car brand, General Motors' luxury mark Cadillac hasn't traditionally been all that heavily involved in electric cars. In fact, to date, its only involvement with cars that plug in have been its ELR range extended plug-in coupe, a car which featured a particularly tone-deaf advertising campaign that spawned several spoofs from its rivals, and many of us in the plug-in world still cringe about today, as well as more recently, plug-in hybrid variants of various internal combustion engine models. But today, Cadillac took the first step towards a change of direction, debuting its brand new Lyric all-electric SUV. And while specifications are still sparse, as is often the case when a new model is debuted ahead of a planned production launch a year or more down the line, we're going to do our best and share what we do know, armed with what little B-roll and what little footage of this car we actually have. Then again, it is a halo car, one which will likely gain more attention in China than the US. So take from that what you will. Debuted during an online event this evening, in keeping with most other reveals this year, Cadillac focused not only on the brand heritage, but also on interviewing the team behind the car's creation. During a 12-minute preview video ahead of the main reveal event, featuring a diverse team of engineers and designers from around the world, elements of the car's design and aesthetics were touched on, including its almost 50-50 weight distribution, its rear-wheel drivetrain with optional all-wheel drive dual-motor setup, and its cobalt manganese aluminium battery pack made by Ultium. The video was frankly quite touchy-feely with not a whole lot of technical information about it. And the theme continued throughout the rest of the presentation, which turned out to be just a Q&A session. And to be clear, much of what I'm going to tell you about today was gleaned during an embargoed presser earlier this week, plus what I already know about the battery pack underpinning this brand new plug-in. Highlighting the Lyric as a turning point for both General Motors and Cadillac, it's clear that GM and Cadillac wants Lyric to be both a technological showcase as well as a halo electric vehicle. And while a price hasn't been published yet, I think we'd all be fooling ourselves if we said that the Lyric will be anything but a high-end, high-ticket car. Like most new electric models coming to market, Lyric features a longer wheelbase than non-electric SUVs. And that longer wheelbase allows not only for a larger battery pack, but also a far more spacious interior than you'd get on an internal combustion engine Cadillac of the same size. The result is a car that looks a lot less like most Cadillac SUVs on the road today. There's less boxiness and a lot softer lines than, say, an Escalade. And if you squint just right, you might see a little similarity with the Polestar 2 at the front and a cross between a Lexus and maybe the FF91 at the rear. At the front, there are now traditional vertical lights that feature in many Cadillac vehicles. But in the case of the Lyric, those vertical lights are actually also the headlights, which is a new thing for the brand. This gives the front of the Lyric a very different look to its stablemates. Added to that is a high-tech radar transparent grill area, which features additional lighting, including a fully illuminated badge, both of which animate as you approach the car. No, I don't want to guess how much that costs or how much it had cost to fix, but Cadillac says Lyric will have the latest version of its semi-autonomous driver assistance technology, aka Super Cruise, so hopefully accidents will be few and far between. But I'll come to Super Cruise in a second. The charge ports of Lyric are hidden behind the front quarter panel, accessible via a single touch to a motorized charge door. What's interesting here is that Cadillac says Lyric will come with at least 150 kilowatt DC quick charging, as well as an onboard charger that can charge at home at speeds of up to 19 kilowatts. I'm not sure if that's for the US market or for China. We'll come to that in a second. But that is far more powerful than previous onboard GM chargers, and it puts the Lyric's at-home charging capabilities far, far ahead of many of its competitors. Discussing charge time and batteries, Cadillac noted that its customers are telling them that charge times need to be as short as possible and that they won't consider an electric car if it has a range of less than 300 miles per charge. This does go some way to explaining the massively powerful onboard charger, but it doesn't explain why Lyric isn't getting the more powerful 800 volt, 250 plus kilowatt DC quick charging capable battery pack that we know Ultium is readying for the Hummer EV. 
As a reminder, the Ultium brand, developed jointly by LG Chem and General Motors under the name Ultium LLC, is the name given to a range of modular battery packs coming to future General Motors cars over the next few years. In fact, working together under the Ultium LLC partnership, LG Chem and GM have literally just started making a brand new battery facility in Lordstown, Ohio, specifically to produce batteries for the Lyric, the upcoming Hummer EV, and many more future GM brand Ultium-based electric vehicles. But since I've already covered Ultium in depth on this channel, I'm not going to go over it again here. If you're interested in that tech, you can click here to watch that video. Style-wise, the interior of Lyric is classic Cadillac with a bit of a makeover for a more high-tech generation of vehicle. In a moment of one-upmanship to itself and the already massive screen in some of its latest vehicles, Cadillac has given the Lyric a massive 33-inch curved display. Fully customizable, Cadillac's team have emphasized in press calls several times how detailed the color reproduction is, but I'd suggest that if you want to check that out for yourself, you might want to be a passenger rather than the driver. That thought is further emphasized by one feature I am actually looking forward to trying out in the real world, a dual zone heads up display, which from the description being given by Cadillac seems to offer some pretty impressive functionality. There's a traditional head up display, giving your vehicle speed and other pertinent information in the lower portion of your windscreen, as you might find on many high end cars today. But then there's a promised upper head up display area, which quote, projects information onto the road ahead. This suggests a head up system that might be easier to read when your focus is two or three cars ahead. Since it's Cadillac, Lyric will also feature an update to Super Cruise. That's a system that Cadillac has been putting in its vehicles for the last few years. The new update includes lane changing capabilities, which those with Tesla autopilot equipped cars will probably already be familiar with. But other than that, and talk of the luxury interior and the blue suede lined inset trinket tray directly below the IP, that's information panel, which is what Cadillac likes to call the infotainment touchscreen. We really don't have much else to share. Zero to 60 times have not been discussed, nor has any details about top speed, price or availability. As is often the case when a new luxury vehicle breaks cover, it looks like we're just going to have to wait until a lot closer to its planned launch next year to find out more. And even though Cadillac says the Lyric will charge at speeds in excess of 150 kilowatts and have a range, quote, beyond 300 miles per charge, these do come with the usual disclaimers about this being a pre-production car and those figures being based primarily on GM's initial testing. Essentially then, this is a car that GM says is about 80 to 85% production intent. And that leaves us where? Will it actually come to market? Absolutely, most definitely. But it won't be like the vehicle we saw today. That vehicle is somewhere between a concept and a production intent vehicle. It's most certainly not a compliance car, but honestly, it's one that most people won't be buying. And that's because it's a premium plug-in. It will likely get more attention from the media than consumers, initially at least. And it showcases not a car that's coming next year, but a car that won't be sold in the US until 2022 at the very earliest. China will probably get it next year. And as my good friend and former colleague John Volker noted earlier this evening in a piece over at Drive, the Lyric is a car that, quote, is exactly what the Chevrolet Volt was in 2008. A vehicle, something that points to a supposed future and proof that a company whose US profits come from full-size trucks and SUVs has a future that fits into a much greener 21st century. And I don't know if you remember the Volt concept. It was very different to the production car with China's drive towards electric vehicles being far stronger and more realistic than the US's drive, and many consumers in the US still in love with big engines, the Lyric feels like yet another luxury EV in a market that's already swimming with them. The Ultium battery technology looks fantastic, and I'm hopeful we're going to see something more concrete soon regarding a production vehicle and production specs for the Lyric. But unless the Lyric delivers on its driving dynamics, something Cadillac says it will, I suspect it'll be overpriced and ignored by all but the most wealthy of buyers, which come to think of it was just like the ELR was many years ago. 
That's it for today's video. If you'd like to help us make more videos like this, please do like, comment and subscribe. And you can support us using the links below, which now include Ko-fi, Patreon and Bitcoin. Don't forget too that you can chat with the rest of the team on Discord as well as other Transport Evolved fans. There's a link below. And if you're a Patreon supporter, you get access to our Patreon-only Discord chat room. Thanks to the folks scrolling by on my right. They are our charged up patrons. Thanks to Jeffrey Songster, John Lyons and Ray Jean Fellows, our $50 a month self-driving patrons. And special thanks to our Starman level patrons, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, JP Fagerback and Sean Udea. If you're looking to watch something else from this very channel, then you might want to check out the suggestion here. Watch it if you haven't. And I'll be back soon with more great content for you all to enjoy. Until next time, wash your hands, stay safe, wear a mask when you're out and about, and work to become a better, kinder person. Strive for equality, speak out against injustices and bullies, and remember to treat others as you yourself would like to be treated. Remember to be the change. And if you are exercising your democratic right to peacefully assemble and protest, do it smartly. Thanks for joining me, and until next time, keep evolving.